There are sharks that glow in the dark. For example, swell sharks. They live in the dark ocean depths, almost 1,700 feet under the surface. No one knows why exactly, but they emit a fluorescent glow only other swell sharks can see. Scientists detected the glow because they used filters that blocked out yellow light. They think that could be the way for these big fish to communicate with their buddies. This glow helps sharks fight infections on a microbial level. Cowbirds have secret passwords they use to recognize each other. They're a specific type of parasite bird since they lay their eggs in other bird species' nests. The young cowbirds have an inner mechanism where they recognize their species singing, like some sort of secret password only they know. That's how they manage to find others of their kind. A grizzly bear has an incredibly strong bite. It may look cute, but if you're close to this big guy, you better stay out of reach of its sharp claws and especially its mouth. Its bite force is more than 8 million pascals, which means it can crush a bowling ball. Some animals have skin-deep stripes and others have more superficial ones. Tigers are in the first group. Not only is their fur striped, but their skin is as well. It's the same with some other furry big cats, like snow leopards. Giraffes and zebras are in the second group, since they have patterns only on their coats. Speaking of zebras, do you think they're black with white stripes or white with black stripes? At first, it really looks like the second option is correct. Their black stripes mostly end towards the inside of their legs and on their bellies, and the rest of it is white. But that's not true. Surprisingly, they're black with white stripes. All of their fur, both white and black, grows from follicles that have something called melanocyte cells. All animals have these cells. They produce a pigment called melanin, and it gives color to their hair and skin. When it comes to zebras, chemical messengers tell which melanocytes send pigment to which area of fur. That's why zebras have a black and white pattern. But white is not actually its own pigment. It's an absence of melanin. So black is their default color. Koalas have fingerprints that are so close to ours that they could even taint crime scenes. It doesn't seem like they have a lot in common with humans, but take a closer look at their hands. They have distinctive loops and arches. So if any koalas want to do something illegal, it would be a good idea for them to wear gloves. Ghost crabs growl when they're around creatures they don't like or find threatening. They do it using teeth in their stomachs. First, they'll let you know they'll defend themselves if you try anything by showing you their claws. If that doesn't work, they'll go for fearsome growling noises like dogs. But the noise is coming from rubbing their three elongated hard teeth inside their stomach. Ghost crabs produce the same noise when they're grinding up food. Speaking of teeth, did you know narwhal tusks are actually some sort of an inside-out tooth? Unlike the majority of other whales, narwhals are the ones that come with a large tusk or tooth that grows from the inside of their jaw. It has up to 10 million nerve endings, and they're unprotected, which means its tusk is very sensitive to any type of contact. It's almost like a piece of skin, because tusks usually don't have many nerve endings. Up to 95% of humans are right-handed, and it's the same with bottlenose dolphins. There are even more right-handed ones among them than among humans. During one study, scientists found that bottlenose dolphins turn to their left side over 99% of the time, which means they're right-handed. They place their right side and right eye closer to the ocean floor as they go for prey, such as squids, shrimps, or smaller fish. More cool facts from the ocean. Did you know humpback whales use bubbles when they go after their prey? You might think they don't need any special method considering how large they are, but when they're lurking for prey in the open waters, these whales team up and use something called a bubble net technique. While swimming in an upward spiral, they blow bubbles underwater. These bubbles make it difficult for fish to escape. The oldest evidence we have of domesticated cats dates up to 12,000 years ago. Researchers discovered this almost 20 years ago when they were digging through an ancient village in Cyprus. They found cat bones right next to human ones, which suggested they were close even when their lives came to an end. 
Humans were hunters, so they domesticated dogs first, somewhere up to 29,000 years ago. Dogs helped them catch other animals, but they didn't think they needed cats until they started to settle down and store surplus crops. Mice became frequent guests in grain stores, so cats came in handy in those times. Puffins are quite innovative when they want to scratch their bodies. They can surely be proud of their stunning beaks, but they obviously think it's not enough for scratching. Researchers noticed they tend to spontaneously take a small wooden stick to scratch an itchy spot. There's a special type of ant that only lives in a small part of Manhattan. The Broadway medians at the 63rd and 76th Street is the area these crawling critters decided was the best spot for them. The Manhattan ant looks like it's from Europe, but no European species can actually match it. Hey Potterheads, can you believe there's a thing like chocolate frog? Well, not quite, but it looks like it. New Guinea and Australia weren't always separated. They spent millions of years together until about 12,000 years ago, rising sea levels divided them. Since they were together for so long, some animals and plants still inhabit both areas, including green tree frogs. These frogs have spread really far and wide, and some of them, who live in hot, swampy regions surrounded by plenty of crocodiles, actually look like they're made of chocolate. We all know flamingos for their specific color, but they're not actually pink. They're born gray, and that's how they would stay if it weren't for their diet of blue-green algae and shrimp. These foods have a specific natural dye, which is why flamingo feathers turn pink over time. All right, you're scuba diving in the ocean, watching corals and colorful fish flitting by, when suddenly an enormous shadow appears above you. You look up and see a massive creature approaching you, its mouth a gaping abyss. Relax, just stay still and you'll be fine. This leviathan is a basking shark, one of the scary sea monsters that isn't really capable of doing harm to anyone. Basking sharks are filter feeders, just like baleen whales. They open their large mouths to swallow plankton and don't even have teeth. It's late night in the Central American jungle. You're out in the wild to watch birds, and you hear flapping of wings. Excited, you look intently into your night vision goggles, only to see a face out of your worst nightmares. Ah, don't scream. You'll scare it away. It's a perfectly harmless, wrinkle-faced bat, and it isn't interested in you. These are fruit bats, and wrinkles on their faces allow them to collect fruit pieces and juice for later snacks. By the way, their Latin name, Centurocenex, was given to them for their semblance to 100-year-old humans. Walking around a Nepali national park and deciding to wash your face in the river nearby, you freeze in terror. A crocodile is looking straight at you from no more than a few feet's distance. Then it raises its snout above the water and you exhale in relief. It's a gharial. These reptiles have long and narrow snouts that allow them to efficiently catch fish and, at the same time, prohibiting them from hunting any other prey. While still carnivores, gharials are pretty shy and will slither away at the sight of humans. Right now, there are no more than a thousand of these crocodilians in the whole world, so let it go. Especially if it's a girl gharial. <laughs> You dig your garden in the backyard and notice something moving on your shovel. You take a closer look and drop the tool in horror. A small creature looking like a hostile alien is scurrying away into some burrow in the ground. Eh, no worries. It's just a star-nosed mole. These critters have peculiar snouts that look like they've been blown up from within. Their eyes are small and weak, so the star on their nose helps them a lot to move around and seek food. It's always on the move, touching everything it can reach as if the tendrils were tiny fingers. Oh, you're bathing in the ocean again. Well, look to your right, there's a real tooth shark going right at you. Nah, don't panic. It's just a sand tiger shark. Neither a sand nor a tiger one, it's a vulnerable fish-eating shark that slowly swims in the seas and chases its prey from time to time. There have been no reports of it ever attacking humans. But it still has rows of sharp teeth, so don't try to touch it just in case. 
It may seem placid, but you don't want it to get a bite out of you, do you? Okay, from ocean to desert, you're in Australia and longing for some water. You see a likely spot and start digging the ground only to stumble upon a creature straight from the depths of neither, all covered in thorns. It eyes you suspiciously and slinks away because it's just a thorny devil. Despite its ominous name, this lizard is harmless to humans. Horn-like bumps on its skin are for protection from predators and birds of prey. The thorns are hard, but as long as you don't touch them, you're fine. Now, if you have arachnophobia, it won't calm you down. But tailless whip scorpions you might meet in North and South America, as well as Asia and Africa, are more afraid of you than you are of them. Eh, tell yourself that. These nightmarish creatures don't have stingers and won't even bite when threatened. The worst they could do, and only if you corner them, why would you do that? is prick you with their front legs, leaving tiny puncture marks on your finger. Many people even keep them as pets, and they're quite affectionate toward their owners. Yeah. If you ever stumble upon a burrow from which a hairless, big-toothed creature is speaking at you, just don't mind it and let it be. Naked mole rats are the sphinx cats among rodents. They're close relatives of mole rats, but, well, naked. And they're fascinating in their own right, too. Thanks to living entirely underground, they're almost totally cold-blooded but can conform to any temperature outside. And their flappy, wrinkled skin doesn't feel any pain at all. So pins and prickles, as well as sharp teeth, don't scare naked mole rats. You're once again lost in the jungle, this time on Madagascar. Poor you. The night has fallen, and you seek shelter. But when you think you've found a suitable tree to build a lean-to, you freeze in terror. A black, long-fingered hand appears on a tree branch right above you, and two huge yellow eyes are staring you down. Then you see a shaggy face and realize it's just a lemur. An eye-eye, more precisely. This creature is native to Madagascar and only goes out at night, so you're lucky to see it. It fulfills a role of a woodpecker in tropical forests. It knocks on tree trunks to find bugs and uses its long, wizened fingers to reach inside. Now, sloths can hold their breath longer than dolphins. Yep, incredible but true. They slow their heart rate so much they can stay under the surface for up to 40 minutes. Unlike fish, dolphins and whales are aquatic mammals, which means they can't breathe underwater. When it comes to breathing, they're more similar to us than the fish. Both of them have lungs, and they breathe air through something we know as a blowhole. When they're under the surface, they hold their breath until they come up for some air again. Dolphins can stay under the water for 10 minutes. A sperm whale can hold its breath for 90 minutes, while an elephant seal holds the record when it comes to aquatic mammals and can stay under the water for 2 hours without having to go up. There's a wasp so tiny, much tinier than its name, it's smaller than an amoeba, even though amoebas are made of one cell only. You can see this wasp has the same body parts as the rest of the bugs – wings, brain, eyes, and the rest – but it's really a tiny version of an insect since it's only eight thousandths of an inch long. And the smallest adult insect we know of is a parasitic wasp with a big name, also known as the fairy fly. Their males don't have wings, they're blind and only five thousandths of an inch long. Now, it's no coincidence each animal species has different colors and patterns. One of the reasons for that is to help them stand out when looking for their potential mating partners or to send a warning to predators they're poisonous and hope they get the message right. Then there are ambush predators, such as tigers. It's very important for them to remain invisible because the difference is huge. If their prey sees them before they get there, no dinner that night. But why exactly are tigers orange? For us, orange is a color used for things that need to be ultra-visible. For example, items such as safety vests or traffic cones. To the human eye, orange will mostly stand out in the environment. So if there's a tiger coming for you, you'll spot it relatively easily. But humans have so-called trichromatic color vision. When light from your surroundings enters your eye, it hits the retina, a thin layer located in the back. To process that light, 
the retina uses two kinds of light receptors, rods and cones. Rods can only distinguish differences in light and darkness. They can't sense color. Our eyes will mostly rely on rods in dim light. Cones are in charge of color perception. Humans mostly have three types. Cones for green, blue, and red. That's exactly why we call our vision trichromatic. Most humans see three primary colors, together with their colorful combinations. Apes and some monkeys also have such a style of vision. But most mammals that live on land, including cats, horses, deer, and dogs, have dichromatic color vision. Retinas in their eyes have cones for two colors only, green and blue. When humans get information from their green and blue cones only, they're considered colorblind since they can't, for example, tell the difference between green and red shades. This is similar with mammals that live on land. Deer are surely tigers' prey way more than humans. And deer don't see tigers as orange, but green. Green tigers would surely be more difficult to spot, which would mean more dinner for tigers. But evolution still decided to go with orange because it's simply easier to produce such a color. The only green mammal is a sloth, but its fur is not naturally green. It's because of the algae that grows in it. And they can hold their breath for 40 minutes. The water around the poles can get very cold during certain periods of the year. There's plenty of fish that live there, but when that happens, they need to swim away to survive. But there's a special group of fish native to the southern ocean near Antarctica. The temperatures there are from 28 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Technically, that's below freezing, but all those dissolved salts in the seawater don't allow it to freeze over. And these fish can survive because they have a special feature called glycoprotein. It helps them stay in their home because it acts as sort of a natural antifreeze. It's a protein that prevents all those ice crystals from forming in their blood and helps it continue to flow normally. Have you ever wondered how tiny animals like ants breathe? Try to open your mouth and throat, but at the same time, hold your chest and diaphragm still. The diaphragm is a muscular structure that separates the chest and abdominal cavities in all mammals. It expands as you breathe. If you can't do this, you can't hold your breath, because oxygen will still find its way into your lungs. At least, enough of it to keep up with your body's demands. But generally, when you breathe, diaphragm is actively pumping air in and out of your body. To survive without the diaphragm doing so, you'd need more than one throat and a way smaller body. Now, ants have 9 or 10 pairs of openings along the sides of their tiny bodies. They're called spiracles, and each is connected to branching series of tubes. It's a system similar to human lungs. Their blood doesn't carry oxygen from those tubes to the rest of the body. Instead, the tubes spread this oxygen. The endings of these branches directly touch the membranes of their cells. This can only work in really small animals. When the body is bigger than 8 tenths of an inch, these tubes are too long, so they can't diffuse air fast enough. There are a couple of reasons why giraffes have long necks, which, by the way, can grow up to be 6.5 feet long. From first glance, it seems evolution gave them those to reach the sweetest topmost leaves of the trees. It's exclusive access other animals can only dream of. So giraffes don't have to compete for the best bites. But over time, researchers realized it's not the only reason. They also think the neck could be a good factor when male giraffes go into combat. The same as male antelopes will use their prongs or when a stag uses its antlers. A human year is not the same as a dog year. You might have thought that dogs age seven times faster than we do, but it's not that simple. A dog that's been around for one year is, in fact, already 31. It will most likely even have its own little puppies running around. But here's where it gets tricky. Two human years don't necessarily mean that your dog is 62 either. Your buddy will need to be around four in our years before it reaches old age. A four-year-old dog will be 50, but a seven-year-old dog will be 62. And an eight-year-old dog will only be 64. So, they age faster, but also slower and slower as time passes by. 
The next time you're celebrating your best bud's birthday, be sure to put lots of candles on the cake and buy even more presents than you normally would. A common misconception is that dogs are colorblind. They're not, but they don't see color exactly as we do. They have trouble distinguishing between their reds and greens. It all just looks like a mash of gray, brown, blue, and even yellowy tones. That's because their eyes lack one of three photoreceptors needed to perceive colors fully. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Wrong! Because of their old age, they might need more persistence from you, but it's not impossible. The key here is to be as positive as you can. If you see they're not feeling up to it right now, that's okay. Let them rest. And in a little bit, you can pick the training session back up. Reward still needs to be a big part of the whole ordeal. After Max successfully speaks, give it its favorite biscuit. Then, it'll speak on command whenever you ask it to. That dog has shoes on. They might seem unnecessary, but today the weather's 90 degrees outside. Imagine walking with your bare feet on asphalt during this heat. You'd feel like you're stepping on lava, and so would your pup. Some dogs are better equipped to handle different weather conditions, but dog shoes can prevent your little buddy from harming its paws. It's the same during winter, when it's freezing cold. You wouldn't just walk around without a jacket on, so make sure your buddy is warm too. Dogs with a lot of fur don't need to get their hair cut to feel lighter. They have what's called an undercoat. In winter, it gets thicker, which gives your buddy an extra layer of protection from the cold. Then, during springtime, your dog will shed some of its fur. It's that same undercoat that will keep your dog comfy during hotter days. When you shave a dog's fur, the new one coming in might get curly or entangled. It might just be better to leave it as is. You can also find different alternatives to keep them cool. Keep it in the shade when they're out and always bring a bottle of cold water with you so your buddy's always refreshed. At home, you can put damp towels for them to lie on. If you have a garden, you can also turn its sprinklers on and let Max run free. It'll exercise and have lots of fun. Not all dogs are great swimmers, but all dogs love swimming. If yours can't swim all that well, it might be because it has a bulky chest and a large flat head. In fact, it might not even be able to stay afloat. Get it a swimming vest designed especially for dogs. Some people might say a slightly open window is enough to keep a dog in the car. This isn't true because after spending just a few minutes in a heated or cold car might mean severe health implications for your best friend. Some states even let you let a dog out of the car if you see it in there to let it breathe. If your dog can't stand mail carriers, it might be because it's trying to protect you. They bark because they're trying to alert you, their pack leader, that the vicious mail carrier is coming. You can fix this by introducing them to one another. This way, your dog will recognize them as a friend and not a villain. Unlike you, your dog isn't yawning because it's sleepy. Yawning is a way for them to show anxiety. If it doesn't like cats and there's one around, it could yawn. Or maybe there's a new person in the house and Max isn't feeling comfortable in their presence. Or you take your dog to a play date, but they're not getting along. Max keeps yawning because he's getting upset. Yawning is also a way to show you it's running out of patience. It might be time for both of you to leave. Dogs eat grass when they're sick, but this isn't always the case. Catching your dog eating grass when you've been talking to your friend for way longer than you should have probably means it's just bored. They do it to be rebellious too, or just because it's fun. It won't be a problem if the grass isn't treated. Either way, just make sure it doesn't eat too much of it. Otherwise, head out to the vet. Even a little bit of chocolate is poisonous for your pup and should be kept hidden away at all times. This includes cocoa powder and baker's chocolate. This applies to cats too. If you suspect that your pet has eaten a large amount of chocolate, take it to the vet's office immediately. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.